Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this memorial of St. Teresa of Avila, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You conquer over sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your Spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the Church the way to seek perfection, Grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the holy ones who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace, that he granted us in the Beloved. In Christ we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, in accord with his favor, that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times, to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has made known his salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. 
I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you who build the memorials of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law! You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourself did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Every, uh, every once in a while in my homilies, I'll talk about how, you know, trying to understand why would they want to kill Jesus? Why would they want to gang up on him? Like, these are the moments right here. Woe to you, woe to you. Jesus, gentle, loving, kind shepherd Jesus is uh, uh, taming the sheep, as it were. Okay, so um, uh, just, you know, make a mental note of this moment here in the scriptures when you're trying to remember, you know, why did Jesus get killed on the cross? It's, it's for moments such as these. God wants us uh, to be in heaven with him. You heard me preach about this this last weekend. He so desperately wants the best version of us. God wants the best for us. Uh, all the parents that are in the room, my own included, sitting in the third row, so that get that out of the way. My mom and dad. It's my mom's birthday tomorrow, so we love you, mom. We're glad you're here. And dad. You know, my, my parents, they wanted the best for us when we were growing up as kids. And so any disciplining that went on in the home, it wasn't as if it was perfect. You know, they're not perfect human beings either. My mom shaking her head. She got at least, you know, every once in a while she'd sit. You know, a little bit. So parents are not perfect. And it's hard for us as kids to understand that because they, have, they seem to have all the answers when we're young. And then as we get older, we realize that when we're teenagers, they don't have all the answers as parents. And in fact, they might be, you know, quite wrong about something. And we feel like it's our job to inform our parents how they're all doing it wrong. <laughs> You know, our parents want the best for us. The Lord wants the best for us. And so the discipline of family life at home sometimes feels like heaven. And it, sometimes it feels like purgatory. And when you fight tooth and nail on what they want you to do as your parents, it feels like hell. Right. <laughs> And so the movement, of, to move it from hell to purgatory, you have to switch in your brain. My parents love me and want the best for me, and so uh, they are trying to help me become a better human being. When they say, please take out the garbage, please help do chores, please do this, please do that. Um, if, if they really are in line with God's will, then they're trying to help us get ready for heaven. That's the goal. It doesn't mean parents are all good. Some parents are very bad and not good to their kids. Um, in that case, it's okay to rebel and become holy when you get older, okay? Rebel against them. Always try to become the best version of who God is calling you to be. 
And so if you, if you, when you're growing up in the home, and all of us that have grown up and become big kids in the room, we know that at some point, you know, the training wheels come off and you have to just live life and try to figure it out. And it's not easy. Those things that were little arguments when we were kids that, you know, we made a big deal out of, but on a scale from one to 10, they were like fours and fives. Suddenly you get into the workplace and it's sevens and eights and nines and tens. It gets really serious. Someone can lose their job. Someone can lose their way of life. Friendships break up. Uh, divorces occur. I mean, the stakes in adulthood are very high. And so to understand that the Lord really does want the best for us. And so he's going to elicit from us or bring out of us opportunities to love and be patient and be generous and be kind. And he's going to keep working at that as long as you're willing to let him do it. If you choose not to let him do it, it's just going to feel like hell. Why are you picking on me all the time, God? Why can't you just let me be? Okay. But to transition into that space in our brain where we say, you know what? I'm going to learn from this. To be a disciple is to be someone who's learning, always learning, always learning, always learning, all the time. So listen a little bit to that first reading and see that this is one of the more beautiful kind of hymns or, or spoken poems that Paul writes when he's speaking to his friends. Uh, I, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the holy ones who are in Ephesus. Now. It's good to remember that when he's writing to his friends in Ephesus, it's because they've got problems. <laughs> he's not writing just to kind of say hi. They've got all kinds of issues they're dealing with in their family and in their community. And so he's writing to them, but he's to, to, my, to the holy ones, to the ones who are trying to follow God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God just is just waiting to give us heaven. He's trying to pour it out upon us, all these graces. He chose us in Jesus to be holy and without blemish before him. Have you ever had one of those moments, the kids, you'll understand this, you get a new outfit you ever get a new outfit and you go put it on and you stand in front of mom and dad and everybody? I have a new tie. Everybody, do you see my new tie? It clips on and clips off. You ever do that as kids? Did your brother do that as kids? No, okay. Well, that's what I did as a kid, I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> we get all proud. We just love standing and having, like, basking in the light. And that's what the Lord wants for us. He wants us to just enjoy being ourselves and being free from sin and corruption and anger and frustration and all the blah, blah, icky, icky sins that creep in. Why do we have to learn not to cheat when we play games? Because it makes our soul dirty. Why do we have to learn not to lie? Because it makes our soul dirty. And then you don't you don't want to stand in front of everybody when you feel icky with sins. You want to get it clean. Where do we go if you want to get your sins clean? The first thing happens up here in the front. What's the first thing we do with babies when, we, when they need to get clean? We do what? What do the kids know? Baptism. Baptism, right? We take water and we put it on the baby's head and we all go, yay! We wash the baby free from sin. And so when we're baptized, that's the moment we are claimed by God. We're washed free from sin. And then the parents are told, here's the white outfit. Put it on the baby. They put the white outfit on the baby. And they say, bring this outfit unstained into heaven. So it's a job of parents to try to bring their kids up without any stains of sin. And so, you know, the kids are in the back seat. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. Stop it. They're provoking each other. Stop touching me. And then mom and dad are like, don't make me turn this car around. Please stop touching each other. Please just sit outside. Please sit there. Be good. What are they trying to do? They're frustrated too. Mom and dad are frustrated. Hopefully they're, please kids, please settle down in the bag. Please be nice. That's parents having some patience, right? 
And they're trying to help us grow in holiness. Because when you get older, all kinds of things happen where it feels like people are provoking you and causing all kinds of antagonism. And you have to learn how to love even more than. So, this grace that God needs to give us, we have to open ourselves up to his grace. We have to ask him for forgiveness of our sins. After baptism, what happens if we fall into sin after we get baptized? Then where do you got to go? Where do you go if you need your sins forgiven? One of the middle aged Con Confession. We have to go to confession. Yes, good. I don't know if you said it like that. It sounded like that from up here. But it's good. No, you know, we go to confession, don't we? And it's, hopefully it's a good experience. Hopefully it's a healing moment where you go and you ask Jesus for forgiveness and you walk away. It's like you got a new tie or a new dress. You just feel great because you're free from sin. And you get to start over fresh every single time you go to confession. So to really understand God wants the best for us. God is here. We're about to go into the Mass now. And Jesus is going to nourish us with his body and his blood, soul, and divinity. And keep us on this path to heaven. Working, working, working to become holy in God's sight. And letting his grace do that for us. Stand now and bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Pray for our bishops that they can follow the movement of the Holy Spirit in guiding the church in our present day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling in any way, those who are sick, those who are uh, taking care of the sick, those who struggle with their finances, or those who are struggling at school, those who have people in their life that are difficult to be around, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all families, that our homes can be places where we grow in holiness and health, and as adults, that we can help to foster that in others and in ourselves, we pray to the Lord. We pray in thanksgiving to our God who forgives us of our sins and keeps giving us a second and third and fourth and hundredth chance. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died and gone before us in faith, we pray for Virginia Gaden, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the next person from our community whom the Lord will call to himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hear all of these prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the Holy Church. May our offerings, O Lord, be acceptable to your majesty, to whom the devoted service of St. Teresa was pleasing in such great measure, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord our God, that your obedient family, whom you have fed with the bread of heaven, may follow the example of St. Teresa and rejoice to sing your mercies for all eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, next week, I will be gone to a workshop from Sunday through into the middle of Thursday. I should be back for Mass and adoration and confessions on Thursday night. Okay, that's my goal is to be back here for all of that. It's down in the Twin Cities, so it's a little bit of a drive, but, but I should be back for that, okay? But uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, there will not be daily Mass at uh, St. Anne's or St. John's. So just so that you're aware of that, in case you were hoping to go to daily Mass next week, those two, we will not have daily Mass available in the parishes those days. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.